Hey guys, welcome back to my page. Thank you so much for being here today. If you are new, my name is Sarah. I'm a Christian life coach and a content creator. And I just come on here and share faith-based content with you guys. And I just pray that the Lord can speak through me to you and to speak into your situation. Thanks for being here. And I also just want to say thank you so much for giving this video a thumbs up and for subscribing to my channel. And um, thank you guys so, so, so much to my subscribers, to my Patreons, to my clients for your prayers, for your comments. I really, really appreciate it. And I know I say that every time in the beginning of every video now. This video for today is just going to be much more casual. I'm very physically tired today. So I was debating whether I would make a video but I just decided Adam's at work right now. I have the apartment to myself. I'm just gonna do a video in the middle of the living room and just make it really candid and casual. Maybe less of a teaching moment and more of just sharing with you guys where I'm at in my faith right now and, and different little revelations that I've gotten throughout the past two weeks. And I just pray that maybe one of them or all of them or something will be able to speak to you in this video. Okay, so one of the first revelations I've had this week, this actually happened last night, is that my husband, you know how sometimes you'll wanna get a prophetic word from someone? My husband decided to be that person for me. So he was like, Lord, what do you want to say to Sarah? Prior to that, I was telling him, like, I feel like I'm not hearing from God as much. Like he's not speaking to me as much. And it started to kind of make me feel, and I know that this is not the truth, but it started to make me feel like I was kind of forgotten in a way or like, um, yeah, just kind of forgotten. And that like other people were being like favored and I just felt like, you know, other people are having things spoken into their lives and blah, blah, blah. And I just didn't feel like that. Um, and you know, you go through those seasons where you really need your faith to be strengthened. So that's the season that I'm in right now because of just the amount of stuff that I have going on. So my husband was like, God is speaking to you. He's speaking in the whispers. You have to be quiet and you have to listen. And you literally have to like put your ear to the floor. Like you need to really be seeking the Lord to hear his voice. And that might sound like duh, like obviously, but it really spoke to me because it really made me realize just how true that is that I'm not, I'm allowing too many distractions in. And between busyness of work and ministry and just not spending the time like really seeking the Lord or even when I'm in my time being distracted thinking of other things. So um, I wanted to share that for anyone else as well that if you're feeling forgotten or that God's not hearing you or that God is not speaking to you, either way God sees you, either way he hears you, either way he's working behind the scenes. Whether we feel like our prayers are being answered or not, but I just wanted to encourage anyone listening that if that convicts you that you know that you have had too many distractions and you're really not seeking the Lord like you know you should be. I just wanted to share that it's a lot more simple than we think. It's like we just have to put those things aside because none of the things in our lives are gonna flourish like they're supposed to anyways if we're not putting God in the center of it. So we're not gonna miss out if we cancel social events. We're not gonna miss out if we take on less work. We're not gonna miss out if we take on less extracurricular activities. We're not gonna miss out if we don't see every post on social media, but we will miss out if we won't put those things aside and we won't spend the time with the Lord. So that was my first word of encouragement. Secondly, was that I listened to this really, really, really amazing podcast that I just found called Amen Podcast. I'm gonna link it below. There is an episode called Confidence and it talks about where you find your confidence. And um, again, this video is all over the place right now, but I listened to this podcast episode and it just spoke to me so much. I highly, highly, highly encourage you to listen to this podcast episode. Um, but in summary, he was basically saying that we will generally find our confidence in these four areas, um, but obviously, ultimately, you need to find it in the fifth, fifth area that he speaks about. I listened to this about a week-ish ago, so obviously I can't remember exactly how he worded it, but some of the things that he said is that we either find our confidence in our situations, so in our circumstances. When everything is going well for us, that's what gives us confidence. You might identify with some of these, or you might identify with all of them. I identified with with situations, a hundred percent. I will even notice, and however this you know resonates with you, I will even notice that when my home is clean, when I've exercised, 
when I've done my skincare routine, when I've booked clients, when I've whatever, then I feel good. I feel confident because I feel confident in my situation. That's not something to find our confidence in because then we're always relying on everything to be going well for us to feel peaceful and to feel okay. And so that was the first one, was finding our confidence in our situation. You know, once this is different, then I'll be able to be happy. Once this is, once I have the finances, once I have my kingdom spouse, once I have my career lined up, once I move, once I get into shape, whatever it is, you know, we know this is something we all do, then I'll be happy, then I'll be peaceful, then I'll be whatever. And so that was a really important key to know to not find our confidence in our situation. The other one he talked about is finding our confidence in our social. So in our, maybe in our social lives or in our social media that gives us that validation. So let's say, you know, you're uh, doing your thing on Instagram or on YouTube and you're really finding your validation in the likes that you get or the subscribers that you have or the comments and you look to that to give you confidence. Like, oh, when I open up my social media or even, or even popularity, like the friend group that I have, um, the people that like me, the people that approve of me essentially. And we look to that to kind of add to our value of like, yeah, I am liked, I am popular, um, I have subscribers, whatever it is. It doesn't necessarily have to be social media, but finding it in our social. The next one he said was finding it in our sexiness. So it has to be all SSSSs. So basically just our physical appearance. And I know that we can feel like, oh, once I, you know, when I exercise or when I have my hair and makeup done just right, or when I have the latest, um, the best outfits or whatever it is, I know that I personally fall victim to that. I know that when I feel like I've been on top of working out or I feel like my skin is looking good or um, I have my waxing done and everything like that, like. I'm just throwing in little things, but I do find that I can find my confidence in that. And again, that is not of God. And then the fourth one was substance. So substance being something that can give us some type of high, whether it is like drinking or drugs, but whether it's like sex because it's a endorphin that gives you some type of high or just any type of something that we go to um, that we know that we shouldn't be going to. Maybe, maybe it's even food. I don't know. Like, I mean, he created this podcast, so, but you know, however it speaks to you, but any type of substance that we go to that gives us maybe that high. And to be honest, even like exercise could be something like that where we're so addicted to it, which I know that I definitely struggle with sometimes because it gives us that almost like a high. Um, so yeah, the four ones were our situation, our social, our sexiness, our substance, but the fifth one that he said that we have to be finding our confidence is, is our, in, is our sonship. What God says about us and who God, and how God sees us is all that matters and all that we need to give us confidence. And he gave different examples in there. His son, he was having his son read, I think, to one of his other children. And I think he didn't really want to read because he was embarrassed maybe of like how he read or whatever. And then he's like, I wrote him a note. And I was like, you're such an incredible reader. You're amazing. Like I've never heard someone read so good. And that just like totally skyrocketed his son's confidence because that's what his father said about him, the words of his father. And so when we relate that, relate that to God and we say, what does God say about me? How does God see me? Instead of trying to fill it in with like, well, you know what, when life's all going good, my work is good income is looking good, social media is looking good, I have friends, I'm looking good, or I'm going to this thing, this substance to make me feel good. Um, and then, you know, I also have God, but no, just like, it was really like finding your confidence from your sonship or daughtership, if that is a word, um, as opposed to from any of those other things, because all of those things are fading, all of those things can be taken away, all of those things are temporary, and all of those things leave us empty. So I know we know that, you know, logically speaking, but I highly recommend to listen to this podcast. He's really encouraging, really entertaining, and I'm a big fan of this podcast, so definitely check it out. Oh, okay, I just remembered the other thing I wanted to share. So if you're someone who struggles with people pleasing, then this might be for you. I listened to a podcast about a week ago and I'm gonna try to remember the name of it. I will link it below if I can find it, but it was just so good in talking about people pleasing. And she just said this statement that was like, other people's happiness is not your assignment. And for me, that just like instantly hit me because I want everyone around me to always 
approve of what I'm doing and to be content and to be happy. And it really bothers me when, when that's not happening. So that just really freed me hearing that, that it's actually not my assignment. It's not my job to make every person around me happy. And this is not in one of those like, you know how there's a lot of um, self-help advice now that's like, put you first, blah, blah, blah. It's, it wasn't like that. It's really, if you seriously struggle with people pleasing, like you, you really, you take on like way too much and you just feel like you have to say yes to everything and then if people don't approve of that, then it's like, it's crippling to you. And it just made me realize that at the end of the day, if we're constantly like spreading ourselves so thin and we're saying yes to so many things, we end up disappointing people in the end because we're trying to make everyone happy, which isn't possible, which isn't possible. Or we take on too much and we end up disappointing that person because we're not able to follow through with what we said we could. Or I heard a quote from Lisa Bevere that said that if you are a friend to everyone, you will be a friend to no one. Just being being okay with disappointing people and being okay to, to, to say no to people. Hey, this is future Sarah here. I'm just editing this video right now and I totally forgot to add in that the reason it's so important to make sure we're not saying yes to everything is because we wanna make sure we're saying yes to the plans that God has for us and ensuring that we're saying yes to the will of God and not just yes to everything that man wants us to do because that can also serve as a major distraction. And I know that with people pleasing, there's like, there's a lot more depth to that um, because there can be a root of people pleasing. There can be a root there of like, why do I need to have everyone's approval or why do I feel like everyone's happiness is my, assi is in, is my assignment? Um, and I could like go into a whole video about that. So I won't for now, but I just wanted to encourage you that if that's something you struggle with, then this was a really, really great podcast. Okay, and the last thing I'm gonna share with you guys, which you might be able to relate to this specific topic, or I'm going to turn it into how it can relate to other areas. The other night I was just really feeling like I have so much going on. Like life is so, life is hard as it is. There's just so much. And I really started having these thoughts come into my mind, like imagine having kids when life is so hectic, life is so busy, life is so hard, life is so crazy. And then imagine bringing kids into the mix and just how difficult that would be. And I really started to feel like, I don't know if I would be able to cope. Like maybe it's just not for me. Maybe like, maybe I'm just not supposed to have kids. And I really started to feel in that moment like it was true and that, you know, maybe I'm not cut out for this. Anyways, so last night I went to this conference and there was a prophetic speaker there and he just, he gave me like a simple word and he just came up to me and my husband. He actually, he gave my husband really amazing words. He gave us a word together as a couple, but then he said, do you guys have children? We said, no, do you want children? And we're like, yeah, we want children. And then, he turned to me and he was like, I don't know the exact words he said, but he's like, I feel like there's these lies that you're thinking like, oh, I won't be able to cope or there's a lot of fear of having children or you're not gonna be able to do it. And he's just said, that's not true. I just want you to know that's not true. Again, might sound super simple, but he had no idea that the day before this thought had come to me and it really felt real. And so with that, I mean, maybe you can take something from this if you have had fear of having children, but not even just that, it's really any area of our lives. I just wanted to encourage you that we can have these thoughts that tell us that, you know, maybe we're just not cut out for ministry. Maybe, maybe marriage is just not for us. Maybe this is just too difficult and I just want to kind of like fall to the sidelines and just do something easier, do something more simple, not follow this calling that God has in my life because it just seems too difficult. It's just too much, it's too overwhelming. And it can be a planted seed from the enemy, but we can really believe that it's true. And then we can run with that and it kind of becomes our own belief. And we don't realize that it's a lie because it just sounds very believable. Like, yeah, you know what? It's just too difficult. I'm just not cut out for it. And I just wanted to share with you that that is not the truth and that God has incredible plans for you. God only has good plans for you. He only has plans to prosper you and to give you hope in a future. And so if there's any areas that the enemy has come in and tried to plant a seed to tell you that you're not qualified or it is too difficult or it is too much work or it would just be easier to just take the back seat and sit back and fall to the sidelines, 
That is not true. That is a lie from the enemy to discourage you. It might sound like your voice, but it is a lie of the enemy to discourage you. And I think that sometimes we can really get caught up with what feels safe. And if God is calling us to something that, that is just so out of our comfort zone and it just doesn't feel safe, it can feel natural. It feels natural to be comfortable. So then we can feel like, yeah, you know what? I just don't feel led to do that. I just don't feel called to do that. But it's actually because it doesn't, it goes against our natural comfort to do that. And so that just reminds me of this quote when I think about God calling us to do things that we're like, oh my gosh, that just seems way too much. It doesn't feel safe. And I just wanted to share this with you guys. You've probably heard it before. It's by C.S. Lewis and it's The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe from the Chronicles of Narnia. And I'm sorry, I haven't read this book. So if I say the names wrong, then I apologize. Aslan is a lion, the lion, the great lion. Oh, said Susan, I'd thought he was a man. Is he quite safe? I shall feel rather nervous about meeting a lion. Safe, said Mr. Beaver. Who said anything about safe? Of course he isn't safe but he's good. He's the king, I tell you. When you hear that, you start to realize, yeah, like God calls us to do wild things. He's wild. Like he calls us to do things that are beyond human possibility because it's through supernatural strength. And sometimes we think that because God is good and God is kind and God has good things for us, that he is not going to call us into really uncomfortable situations. Um, and it just makes you realize like it doesn't always look like it's going to be safe like playing it safe But his plans are always good. So I really pray that something in this video could speak to you today and again, thank you for um, Being here with me today for listening to what I have to share and um, I really appreciate your comments with um, You know if something spoke to you for liking this video and, and sharing and subscribing and all of that. All of the links are below. If you were blessed by this message, if you feel led to support my ministry or support my business, all the links are there. And then lastly, I'm probably gonna say this at the end of every single video until it launches, but if you're interested in becoming a Christian life coach, whether you want to be a Christian life coach or whether you want to use the tools in your ministry or whether you just wanna use it in your faith walk, um, then I really encourage you to sign up. I will put the link below. It's gonna start on April the 18th, 2022. Enrollment closes on April the 10th. I will most likely run it again in the future, but as of right now, this is the time that it is running. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so, so, so much, and I will see you next week. Bye.